Welcome in basketball fans to Wayne Profit Court here on the campus of University of Lynchburg in Lynchburg, Virginia. My name is Tim LaDuca and I will be taking you through today's action. So we got the University of Lynchburg Hornets coming in at four and 11, one and five in the conference, taking on the defending national champions, Randolph Macon Yellow Jackets. They come in at 14 and one and they are 6-0 in the conference, coming off a big win at home a couple nights ago against number five, CNU. It's gonna be a good one today as we get to see some very talented basketball coming from both sides. Once again, my name is Tim LaDuca and I'm excited to be here with you. I am the director of digital media here at University of Lynchburg and we're gonna have a good time. Let's take a look at how these two teams stack up. Obviously took a look at the records and saw the vaunted Randolph Macon Yellow Jackets in first place in the ODAC. And at first glance, you know, points per game, these two teams pretty even there, but once you look a little deeper, you're gonna start seeing some differences there. A really nice performance so far th throughout the year for Randolph Macon, shooting uh, just over 45% from the floor. They're able to stroke it from the three point line, but the Hornets are as well. They come in with the top two shooters in the ODAC in Jason Easton and Elijah Davis. Uh, and then rebounding per game, you know, you got Miles Mallory on Randolph Macon, really talented, uh, not only scoring, but uh, also rebounding the ball, a double-double machine. We'll get into that a little bit later. And assists per game, 15.3 for Randolph Macon, 12 for Lynchburg. Lynchburg only had seven assists in a loss to Guilford on Wednesday afternoon. That's something that they want to see go up in this game. I was talking to Dylan Hall before the game. He's the assistant coach for the Hornets. And if they can move the ball well against Randolph Macon and uh, limit the turnovers. They're gonna have a chance for the upset against the number two team in the country, Randolph Macon, and as we said, defending national champions out of Ashland, Virginia. Okay, well, we can't wait to get started here. There's gonna be lineups and anthem in about two minutes here on the court. When the Hornets are being announced, we'll be back to go through the action with you. You're listening to Lynchburg men's basketball and watching on Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network.
Welcome back, folks, to Turner Gymnasium, where you're watching ODAC men's basketball on LHSN. My name's Tim LaDuca, and we have the Lynchburg Hornets taking on the number two Randolph-Macon Yellow Jackets here on Turner Gym. Let's get a look at some of the starters here. We're going to see Lynchburg starters, and that is going to be kicked off by the point guard. A six foot junior from High Point, North Carolina. Number five, Landon Sutton. Elijah Davis, he's second in the ODAC in three point percentage, shooting 49%. He gets the start. Trey Pittman, he's a junior also from North Carolina. He's the one of four North Carolina natives in the starting lineup for the Hornets. Miles Taylor, also from North Carolina, gets a start at forward. And then Pearson Young, sensational freshman point guard, local product from Lynchburg, Virginia, Virginia Episcopal School for his high school playing days. He will round out the starting five for Lynchburg. Number two, Randolph Macon checks in like this. It's a freshman guard, number two, Jabril Robinson. Then it's the double-double sensation. He's a senior, number 10, Miles Mallory. We are very excited to see him play today. He leads the ODAC in rebounds per game at 9.2. Expect to see him in double figures in that category today. Josh Talbert, a senior guard from Virginia Beach. He gets the start. He just reached the 1,000-point milestone a couple games ago. And then rounding out the top five, top th five for Randolph Macon, excuse me, junior from Fairfax, Virginia, number 23, Daniel Bongay. Okay, so set the scene as well as we can for you. Took a look at some of the numbers here between these two teams and how they stacked up against each other. We'll look at them real quick again. But, you know, Randolph Macon scoring just about at the same clip as the Hornets, but Lynchburg's going to need to pull the upset here if they want to upseed the national champions from Ashland, Virginia. It's going to be a really fun one. Can't wait to get things going with you. All right, so in the jump, it's going to be Miles Taylor versus Miles Mallory. So there's a couple of miles in this jump circle here to do the tip. And away we go. Tip is won by Miles Mallory and corralled by Jabril Robinson. That's how these things get started. Talbert will dribble, cross court pass, skip pass there. So already deep into the first possession here, nine seconds on the shot clock, kicked out off off the mark on the three-pointer, but the offensive rebound brought in by Bengay. So already a second chance opportunity here for Randolph Macon. Lynchburg defense stands strong on the first two possessions for Randolph Macon. Pearson Young comes up with the rebound. So the freshman guard, we were talking about the Lynchburg product. He actually leads the team in rebounding this year. Pearson Young does. Pearson comes into the game. Averaging just over five rebounds a game. He's tied with Miles Taylor in that statistic. Robinson drives the left side. Randolph Macon's been doing some work on that left side of the court so far in front of the Lynchburg bench to start this game. We saw the first offensive rebound brought in by Bengay. Here's a second three-pointer taken. It's off the mark by Talbert. Rebound will go to Lynchburg defensively. And stalemate here so far, 0-0. I was talking to Dylan Hall, as I mentioned, prior to the game. We were in the hallway together. He was printing some, some game notes out. Just doing my usual rounds around Turner Gymnasium trying to Got everything situated for the game today. And I'm like, hey, coach, how do you get this one done today? And he told me that the one thing you're going to look for, maybe two things. The one thing for sure you want to look for at the end of the game to tell if Lynchburg was able to, you know, keep it close. Obviously, besides the final score is going to be their three-point shooting percentage. If Lynchburg can shoot the three well, as Miles Taylor gets the first bucket of the game with a running floater, from inside the three-point line, I was saying Dylan Hall 
assistant coach for Lynchburg was saying, if Lynchburg can shoot the three, they're gonna have a chance today. Shooting 30% on the season as a team, but two of the best shooters in the conference, actually the two best three-point shooters in the conference on Lynchburg. It's Elijah Davis who's guarding right there in the zone, and also Jason Easton, who's shooting 60% from downtown. Didn't miss last night as he set, or last game out, as Trey Pittman's gonna take a three. It's way off, doesn't touch anything, it's an air ball. But Jason Easton had 14 points. It's a career high for the freshman in the loss to Guilford on Wednesday. As Benge gets inside and finishes to tie the game up at two. So Dylan Hall, Coach Hall also told me to expect to see some zone defense from Randolph-Macon. They play the zone really well as Miles Taylor's off the mark. And the defense corralled by Mallory. But we haven't seen the zone so far from Randolph-Macon. Maybe that's because the zone it can sometimes be susceptible to three-point shooting and just a way to you know, keep Lynchburg a little bit colder from three-point three land, run the man-to-man. -man. Turnover there by Talbert. So a little sloppy here from Randolph making to start the game as we have a 2-2 tie just a three and a half minutes into the game. There's a turnover on the other end. Oh, but I spoke too soon. It's good hustle there by Trey Pittman. He's the junior who leads this Lynchburg team in scoring. Kick out, Pearson Young for three. No good. Rebound and now pushing in transition is Keyshawn Pulley Jr. Talbert, he's fouled, can't convert, but he's gonna get the line for two and our first two free throws of the day. Delbert, he's from Virginia Beach, Virginia. He's a senior who's on, he's a big role, had a big role on the uh, national championship team last year for Randolph-Macon. So we're gonna see the first substitution now for Lynchburg. Pearson Young subs out in favor of Jordan Parham. Parham is another player who can knock him down from deep. He hasn't had too much success so far this season, shooting 20% from downtown, but he's a guy that really could get hot from down there. In fact, if you look at his game log from the year before, he has one of the best games of his career against Randolph-Macon a year ago. Randolph-Macon was ranked number one at the time. That's the way they started the season, ranked number one in the preseason poll to start the year. But Jordan Parham scored 21 in that losing effort from Lynchburg is now we're gonna see the zone from Randolph-Macon. Seems to have Lynchburg flustered. This is the first time they're facing it. Landon Sutton from three, he connects. So once Randolph-Macon goes into that zone, Lynchburg immediately converts from downtown with the three-pointer. Vincent Payne subbed in for Randolph-Macon as well. Good post move there by Benge. But off the mark, nicely defended as well by Trey Pittman. Trey Pittman, who was playing defense there on Ben Gay with those nifty post moves, also has some really nice footwork and ability to score from the low block there. It's being guarded by Mallory right now. Quick catch and release from Davis off the front rim. Ball's loose. Randolph making with the board. Mallory drives and is fouled by Pittman. Pittman can't believe it, but we'll send Miles Mallory to the line for two. So Miles Mallory comes in averaging 15 points per game, just under 10 rebounds a game, so nearly averaging a double-double. And from the line this season, shoots 67%. Makes about three free throws a game as he makes that one. Bryce Scott comes in, and Mason McCovic for Lynchburg. So it's Scott for Randolph-Macon, and McCovic 
for Lynchburg. Looks like Lane Johnson's waiting to sub in for Mallory here. Mallory converts both free throws and comes off in favor of the South Riding Virginia native, the junior Lance Johnson. Johnson's averaging 3.3 points per game, so about a 12 point difference in the scoring total just subbed in, but looking to give Mallory some, some rest here about five minutes into the contest. Davis this time finds McCulpick underneath and the easy two good vision there from the sophomore Elijah Davis to find McCulpick hiding under the basket and back and forth to go so far in the early going. Corner three off the mark again. Tip in Talbert no good. Oh and Talbert as he was laying on the ground there looks like he got kicked in the face. But Lynchburg's a little upset that they stopped play there as they had numbers, five on four, albeit, but still a scoring chance nonetheless. Head coach Hillary Scott asking for an answer to why the game was stopped, but you know, you had Talbert down on the ground and the referee assessed the safest thing to do here was to stop the game uh, for Talbert's sake, and I think that was the right decision. So Lynchburg now will have the ball with a one point lead. Just over five minutes have gone by here on Wayne Profit Court here in Lynchburg, Virginia. The Hill City, as they call it. City of Seven Hills. Not as commonly referred. Sutton hands it off to Davis. Davis dribbling along the far baseline gets fouled by Scott. We'll have a timeout here after the foul on Scott. We'll take a break with him here on Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. All right, after the first media timeout, we return to see Lynchburg inbounding here underneath their own basket with Landon Sutton and with a one point lead. Landon Sutton's made one from the opposite elbow and he misses that one. Offensive rebound, Mason Makovic battled down low, jump ball's gonna stay with the Hornets. So both teams Battling here through a low-scoring affair so far, but eye-opening totals so far for Randolph-Macon. 14% from the floor, they're one of seven. So they get the turnover here. This is probably gonna be an easy two, and it is for Bryce Scott. That'll help the field goal percentage from the floor, just finger rolling it in at the rim. But as we continue down the line there, you know, you know 0 for three from the field, from the three-point line, and then four for four, salvaging a little bit. Uh, with the four for four from the free throw line are the Yellow Jackets. And an offensive foul there is called by Landon Sutton. It's gonna go down as a turnover, as well as the foul for Sutton. Probably the most painful turnover a player can make there is an offensive foul going in for contact and also getting the turnover there. 
So on Scott's easy two in transition off the steal, the Yellow Jackets gain the one point lead. Jabril Robinson coming in as a freshman, big shoes to fill as Buzz Anthony has now left the team as the national champion and just the heart and soul of this Randolph-Macon team for years. Really privileged to see him play. Robinson started 13 games. It's Vincent Payne knocks down the three-pointer. Robinson, the 13 games played, started 13, started all the conference games for Randolph Macon. Shooting 41% from the floor, averaging eight, nearly nine points a game, 8.8. .8. Here's Puller. Puller's entrance pass to Lindsay down low. Jump ball, once again, involved in the jump ball is Mason McCovic, but this time it stays with the Yellow Jackets. Get our first look at Noah Lindsay, the senior. Stands at six foot five. One of the taller players here on this Randolph Macon team. Payne can't connect this time. My apologies earlier on with that three-pointer I called from the corner from Payne. It's actually going to be a two-pointer as Payne has two points in the game. So not a three-pointer. My mistake. End up on that one. Sutton picks up his dribble at the top of the key, kicks it out to Fitch. Alex Fitch transferred in from a Division II Millersville. This is a critical part of the team last season. He can shoot it from downtown as well. It's just a very common skill among this Lynchburg team is Jordan Parham at the end of the shot clock possession gets the floater. So Lynchburg's found some success there, driving in and finishing softly uh, from the painted area. Miles Taylor scored the first bucket of the game for Lynchburg from that spot and Jordan Parham now gets two. Robinson from the elbow, no good. Ro Sutton had it knocked out of his arms by Noah Lindsay. It's also gonna be a foul, so give the rebound to Sutton and the foul to Lindsay and possession to the Hornets. Here's some exciting news for everybody here. Cole Murphy's a sophomore from Independence, Virginia. He's getting some first half action now. Murphy impressed the coaching staff last game against Guilford, because he's gonna get the uh, point guard duties here now. Oh, watch out behind you. Turns it over there, but as I was saying, Murphy with seven points last game. It's a career high for the sophomores playing on the JV team last season. Stepped up to a bigger role here with Lynchburg. Scored six points in his first game uh, ever for Lynchburg get against Marymount. Back, uh, back in November, six points on two for three shooting from downtown. Once again, Murphy has it poked away. He's turning his back to the basket there. It's where he's getting himself into a little bit of trouble. But he was one for one from downtown against Guilford. So coaching staff hoping that the sophomore can ignite something from the three point line. But he turns it over here. And luckily for Murphy, Pulley Jr. misses the bunny underneath in transition. Also missing there was Parham from short, this time from long, misses again, rebound to Bengay. Interesting possession there for the Hornets, to say the least, as we're approaching the midway point of the first half. Bengay got the rebound, now on the other end, gets the bucket and the foul. I was on Cole Murphy, so uh, inauspicious start for Murphy so far. Two turnovers 
and a foul. But a lot of praises to be said about the sophomore as he scored seven points in his last outing. He's made three pointers so far in his young career and he's earning some valuable minutes against the number two team in the country, which says a lot about him just in that fact. Here's Murphy from three and it's good. Knock it down from the corner right in front of the Randolph making bench, Cole Murphy. That's exactly what we were looking for from the sophomore. And Lynchburg trails by one as we're gonna take a 30 second timeout here. And we'll stay with you. We'll take this opportunity to look at the upcoming schedule for Lynchburg. As we are right in the thick of the ODAC, sched ODAC uh, schedule. You're gonna go on the road for the next two Lynchburg is against Averett and Washington and Lee. Lynchburg swept the season series last year against Washington and Lee, which was uh, critical and a, and a nice little mark on the resume. And then Averett, Lynchburg will see the Cougars for the first time as an ODAC opponent. That should be good. And then you see the uh, next two games will be Randolph and Shenandoah. Both of them played here on Wayne Profit Court, which means Luckily for everybody, they'll be on LHSN. Looking forward to those and hosting the Hornets here on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Travel called there on Bengay. Good defense from Makovic who pulled the chair out from underneath Bengay to cause the turnover as Bengay was trying to work his way along the baseline inside. And we're gonna get our first look at the ODAC's top three-point shooter, Jason Easton. Shooting 60% from downtown this year. Just an appalling mark, in a good way, obviously. But he just started to qualify for the ODAC leaderboard recently. It's Mikovic working on Mallory. Double team comes. Kicked out to Easton. One second left, the floater once more is good for Lynchburg. So Lynchburg's found a little soft spot on the Randolph making man-to-man -man defense, and it's been right in front of the rim on the floater. Here's Talbert working on Murphy. Kicked out to Robinson. Robinson's three, too strong. Rebound, Makovic. Extends the Hornet lead to four here as Lynchburg's three-point shooting from deep has helped them build a quick lead as Talbert quickly responds with the driving layup. Seven different scorers so far for the Hornets. Nobody's made more than one field goal, but uh, well-rounded scoring so far from the Hornet team. Almost looked like Fitch was trying to be the second Hornet to make multiple baskets, but he turns it over there. Some substitutions. We're gonna see Trey Pittman back out there and the first sight of KJ Kavon James. He prefers to go by KJ. That's how we all affectionately know him here in Lynchburg. Mallory, it'll be nice for the Hornets if they can keep Mallory catching the ball so far away from the rim, out beyond the three-point line, as Talbert is gonna not do anything wrong, but it's a three-second violation, causing the turnover underneath the rim. So Lynchburg looking to re-extend the lead to four, which would be the largest lead so far for either team as this game has just gone back and forth. And only as of late did Lynchburg build a multiple possession lead. Substitutions here. Bryce Scott comes in along with Vincent Payne, who I incorrectly noted, I thought made a three pointer. It was a two, so he checks in, but he's taken a couple more shots from downtown. He's taken two of them to be exact, missed them both. Uh, he's looking to be a threat from, from deep for Randolph Macon as Fitch is called for the over and back. 
caught the inbound pass. Or not the inbound pass, that would have been allowed. Caught the pass uh, close to the timeline and just, just a toe over the line. Here's Mallory driving hard, a foul's on the ground on Fitch, but just violently dribbling there from Miles Mallory dribbling to the hole. Inbound, all alone, Pulley Jr. for three. Number three knocks down the triple, and the Jackets retake the lead. Now here's Murphy trying to push it in transition, lost the ball, picked up by Talbert. Kicked out, Pulley once more. Too strong this time, gets his own rebound. This game, which would have been pretty mild-mannered for the opening 13 minutes, now all of a sudden getting a little helter-skelter. Look at the ball movement here from the number two team in the country. And Bryce Scott with another easy two on the excellent ball movement there from the Yellow Jackets, three-point lead. Wowzers. So here's Murphy, picks up his dribble. Defers to Easton, Easton's fouled. That will be only the third team foul on the Yellow Jackets compared to Lynchburg's five. Vincent Payne gets called for the foul. Time it on the court and LHSN will take a break as well. We'll be back in a moment. My name is Brittany Coleman. I graduated in 2014 and I have a major in chemistry and a minor in secondary education. And I'm currently teaching chemistry and seventh grade science at a local combined school. Being able to have access to your professors pretty much anytime they're in their office is really helpful, especially in difficult science subjects. I love that I am able to teach a difficult subject to students who typically aren't going to perceive it as enjoyable. Um, I'm able to present it in an interesting way because I was presented this information in an interesting way. It's nice for me to be able to mirror what it was that influenced me to be able to teach. Welcome back in to Turner Gymnasium, ladies and gentlemen. So we have a three-point game. Randolph Macon has just only recently taken the lead, doing so on Keyshawn Pulley Jr. three-pointer as a freshman, and then an easy two from Bryce Scott following some really nice ball movement. So Lynchburg, inbound. Getting close to five seconds, has to heave it, and Taylor has it. Miles Taylor, dribbling, good ball handling, moving from the big man, left hand finish, no good, offensive rebound, Pittman, once again, no good. That just cannot be an easy ask for anybody, even if you're so close to, you know, to the goal. Six foot four, Bryce Scott, and then obviously the six foot five, Miles Mallory. Never gonna be an easy task when you're being defended by those two players. Also, Daniel Benge was, in there as well on the defense. He misses the easy jump. So Randolph Macon, after making, after missing six of their first seven shots, are now shooting seven of 18 from the floor, so that field goal percentage is increasing. They've made their first three pointer, still haven't missed from the free throw line, and only five turnovers compared to Lynchburg's nine. We're going to get another timeout here. Uh, as Coach Hillary Scott wants to go to the timeout here to talk things over after the miss from Benge. Looking up and down this Randolph Macon team. Obviously, you have Miles Mallory leading the way with those 15 points per game. Then there's Josh Talbert, also a senior, averaging 13.1. 
the top five in the scoring column rounded out by the freshman guard, Jabril Robinson, 8.8. .8. We talked about that. Will Koble, he's averaging 8.3. We haven't seen much of him today, even though he got the start. And then finally, Keyshawn Pulley Jr., 8.2 points per game, and he is shooting 29.1% from three-point line. Driving in, Keyshawn Pulley Jr., another miss for Randolph Macon. Rebound goes to Pittman. Nice cut there, back door from Kavon James. Finds Pittman underneath, but Pittman's denied. It was Lance Johnson with the denial. Shot fake on the ground, dribble, and the foul. Miles Mallory, go to work, big fella. That's just textbook there. The, the pump fake only needs one dribble to go from the top of the key to the rim. Absorb the contact from Pittman and go to the line for one. He's made both of his free throws today, 68% on the season. Swish. Put just put a smile on your face almost when you get to see Miles Mallory do stuff like that. <laughs> just simple. Simple but entertaining nonetheless. Long two from Sutton's no good. Rebound by Scott. Scott defended by Pearson Young, who checks back in with five minutes to go. Pulley Jr. pulls up, too strong. Rebound. Give it to Lynchburg. Still only one field goal per score for Lynchburg. They got seven players who have reached the scoring column, but no one is able to double up or go on any sort of run so far. The three leading scorers for Lynchburg are Murphy, Fitch, and Sutton. They've all made a three-pointer. Miles Taylor misses the pull-up jumper from the free throw line. Talbert spinning. Off the glass, no good. Offensive board put back. Yes, sir, Miles Mallory. And another timeout from Hillary Scott and company. As Randolph Megan is approaching a double digit lead here. This is the biggest lead we've seen from either side. And we will take a moment to catch our breath as well. Lynchburg really stood out for me just because of the way it treated its students. They really do make an effort here. I've learned that over my four years is that they actually do try to listen to what the student body wants. And they try to act on that. They don't really just give you a piece of paper here to then go off and do your own thing. They actually prepare you to like work with different populations, which is what the world is all about. It's just working with people that are different than you. They genuinely care that everyone has the ability to go off into the world and make a difference with whatever they like. Um, for me, that's just being basically in a room with someone helping them achieve their first goal of, I don't know, doing a pull-up. I actually do believe they want you to do the best you can to change someone's life for the better. You can be anyone here, which I think is really cool, but regardless of who you are here, they will make sure you don't fall through the cracks, which is awesome. I have realized that I've never felt lost here. I will not regret ever coming here, that's for sure. Um, so I'm very glad that I came here. Yeah, it's actually pretty awesome. We come back to the action with Randolph Macon leading University of Lynchburg by eight. With four minutes to go here in the first half on LHSN, I'm Tim LaDuca announcing this ODAC men's basketball game for you on a nice Saturday afternoon. A little prerequisite for your uh, NFL viewing today with the playoffs coming up. My Buffalo Bills will play tomorrow, Sunday at 1, so I'm excited about that. Uh, but there's no place I'd rather be than right here, right now, announcing the uh, matchup we got here on the court for you. It's been nice to see Landon Sutton, a junior, step into the starting role here for the Hornets. 
as the primary ball handler for Lynchburg. We've seen Cole Murphy come in and do the same, but you may be wondering, in the absence of a Lynchburg favorite, Kuda Savage missing the game today. He's been in and out of the lineup all season long. Kuda, he's a fan favorite. Transferred in from D Division II Barton College uh, a season prior. Last season he came and he was a leading scorer against CNU when Lynchburg upset the captains here on Wayne Profit Court early on in the season. He scored 20. Later on, as we mentioned, Lynchburg beat Washington and Lee twice. Uh, Kuda scored 30, which is a career high for him against Washington and Lee on the road last season. So he's missed right now on the court as Pearson Young knocks down both free throws. And he's now the eighth scorer for Lynchburg. Again, no, no player has made multiple shots, I guess, except for Pearson, who, <laughs> who made the two free throws. But uh, no one with more than one field goal so far. Trey Pittman. Defending Liam Joyce, another freshman, hailing from Allentown, Pennsylvania. He gets fouled and earns a trip to the line. Randolph Macon so far is six for six from the free throw line. Haven't missed. I really didn't mean to do that to my main man, Liam Joyce, as he misses the first free throw here of the day for either side. And we'll get some substitutions here. Elijah Davis coming back in. Like to see him get hot. We've seen three three-pointers made. Interestingly enough, none of them have been made by the ODAX leading three-point shooters, Elijah Davis or Jason Easton. Easton has not taken one. Elijah Davis is 0 for 1. He had the quick trigger uh, early on in this game, but wasn't able to convert. So here he is, defended by Cobble. Coble started the game. Hasn't gotten into the scoring column yet. Cross court pass. Taylor, pull up and converts. Five point game. Three minutes to go here in the first half. No Miles Mallory out on the court right now. You get your length if you're Lynch. Oh, as I say that, Miles Tallery intercepts at Eurostep, and he's fouled. Looked like Joyce had him on the block, but they're going to call him for. They're not even going to call Joyce for that foul. They're going to call that one on Will Coble. So Miles Taylor now with a trip to the line. Taylor jumped to the pass. He made a nice move. Euro stepping into the lane, getting to the opposite side, trying to use the rim to defend from the shot blocker, uh, but was unable to do so as Joyce was, was able to get a hand on it. But on the other side of the play, they're going to whistle Coble for the foul. Taylor knocks down half of those free throws. And Jordan Parham checks back in for Davis. As I was as I was talking ab about the length and the absence of Miles Mallory on the court, that's when Miles Taylor jumped for that uh, that turnover and the foul on the other end. And now my point is mute as Taylor's back on the court. Also, Daniel Mbenge, or Benge, excuse me, back out there as well. Turnover in front of the Lynchburg bench from Benge is caused by Mikovic. Sutton. He's fouled at the free throw line. That's going to be the seventh foul on the jacket, so Sutton will get a chance for the one and one. Fouls on Keyshawn Pulley Jr. Pulley Jr.'s knocked down one of three from deep so far. Also has three boards and an assist. The assist leaders really aren't worth talking about so far as any, everyone only has one. Three assists so far for Randolph Macon, four for Lynchburg. Trapped on the baseline. Bengay couldn't find the cutting. Mallory 
one-handed floater from Robinson's no good. Lynchburg the other way. Lynchburg looking to push the pace a little bit after the Randolph-Macon misses. They trail by four with two to go. Spinning up and in with the contact. Pearson Young count it. The freshman with a big bucket has a chance to bring Lynchburg back within one after a nice spinning take to the rim. So we mentioned Lynchburg pushing the pace here after the Randolph-Macon misses. That's been uh, working in Lynchburg's favor is we just don't allow Randolph-Macon to get set up on defense quite as well as if you took your time crossing across the timeline, getting situated on offense. So while you're sacrificing maybe um, some structure on offense for Lynchburg, not really running any plays when they push the pace like that, you're gaining a little bit of an advantage uh, with Randolph Macon trying to fit themselves in defensively. So this game's pace at first was pretty fluid, going back and forth, the team's trading a lead, then all of a sudden Randolph Macon just took a lead, uh, built an eight point lead, and things were getting a little out of hand. And now, as Lynchburg has crawled their way back, we've grinded to a halt here as teams trading free throws here on the latter half of this first. Lynchburg's shooting four of six from the free throw line and seven of eight for Randolph Macon make that seven of nine as Bryce Scott misses the first. So for a team that just won the national championship, is ranked second in the country, beat the number five team in CNU on Wednesday on their own court, have won 57 home games in a row. There's a lot of freshmen out on the court there for Randolph Macon, for Josh Merkel and company. But the prestige of this program hasn't gone anywhere. Uh, you know, you, you do have your centerpiece in Miles Mallory, but you know, a lot of freshmen around him. It shows you how well Merkel has been able to recruit to his program and make sure he maintains the high level of talent you know, of quality players and, and just and just getting the right guys on the court to be able to keep the dynasty rolling as Randolph Macon looking for their title defense after winning their first national championship last season against, uh, at the time, number 11, Elmhurst. So quite a uh, schedule for Lynchburg this season as they also played the national runner-up this season. Uh, that's quite a schedule, especially for a young team like Lynchburg. As you look out on the court, you have a sophomore in Makovic, and you have a freshman in Pearson Young who's been a starter all season long. Uh, and you, have, you don't have a senior out there for the Hornets at all. In fact, rarely any seniors contributing at the moment for Lynchburg right now in general. Alex Fitch has gotten some minutes, but he, he's a senior. Kuda Savage, we talked about the seniors out with an injury. Kavon James has gotten some minutes today. He's a senior. Quick release from the corners, Pearson Young. Mason Makovic tried to haul it in. We're gonna have a little conversation here between the referees, and they'll change the call. Mason Makovic earns the offensive rebound for the Hornets. As we have a tie ball game here and a chance for Lynchburg to take the lead with one minute to go here. Sixty-two seconds left on the clock. 12 on the shot clock. Lynchburg's far away from the rim. Oh, nice hesitation move from Parham, but he can't convert at the rim. And they say that Parham's shot hit the shot clock and it's gonna be out of bounds. I didn't see that, but I'm, uh, I'm not as close as the, ref the referee is, so I'm not calling him out. I just didn't see it. I, I was a little uh, take taken aback by the whistle, but it makes sense as Parham's shot went off the shot clock. Here's Talbert driving his way in, bulldozing to the rim through Pearson, Young, and Ma Mason Makovic for the two. Lynchburg content to slow things down here. Can they get the, the shot off? They, they do, but then the foul here on the offensive rebound by Miles Taylor. 
I was trying to uh, point out Lynchburg may be going for the, the two for one. If they could get that shot off before uh, the, the game clock was under 30 seconds, then they could have guaranteed themselves, for the most part, another possession after Randolph Macon gets the ball. However, Parham misses that one. Offensive rebound to Taylor. And he gets fouled with 29.4 seconds left in the first half. Uh, but I'm sure getting points on the board regardless is going to make uh, Hillary Scott, the head coach of Lynchburg and the Hornets, happy here, especially with a chance to tie the game up with this free throw from Taylor. Taylor can't tie the game up. Loose ball, 20 seconds, 25 seconds left now. Randolph Macon, you would expect, will take the last shot. It's Talbert. He surveys the court, guarded by Young. He's got Pulley Jr., Coble, Mallory, and Robinson out there. Mallory sets the screen to the left. Nice move from Talbert, finishes with the left. Two seconds left. Lynchburg inbounds the ball and can't take the buzzer beater shot. And they'll go into the break, trailing by three. However, you have to be happy if you're Lynchburg and Coach Hillary Scott, as you only trail the number two team in the country, a team that's only lost one game all year. They're the number one team in the, in the conference, 6-0 in ODAC play. Down by three. We mentioned these two teams scoring at a similar clip, right, around, right in the low 70s for the season. Uh, and both teams on pace to not even reach that threshold that they've set for themselves throughout the first half of the year so far. Randolph making 30 points, Lynchburg 27. We'll give you a quick leading scores for each team. It's Miles Taylor with six. Pearson Young also has six. He's made four free throws. And Josh Talbert. He made the late bucket there to extend Randolph Macon's lead. He's got eight. Miles Mallory with seven. Double double watch, not really, as he only has three rebounds so far. Okay, we'll be back in a couple minutes to look at some halftime stats, and we're gonna get you ready for the second half of action here on LHSN. Thomas Gibson Hobbs graduated from Virginia Christian College in 1904 as a member of its first graduating class. After earning a law degree from the University of Virginia, he settled in Lynchburg and began a highly successful career as an attorney. In January of 1915, he was invited to attend a meeting of the College Board of Trustees, during which the possibility of closing the college due to financial concerns was to be considered. Mr. Hobbs spoke eloquently of the need to fight for the college's existence, and the board decided to continue operating the institution. He was asked to serve on the board at that meeting and served as the chairman of the Board of Trustees from 1918 until his tragic death in 1942. Mr. Hobbs was a guiding light as the college changed its name to Lynchburg College and moved toward becoming an accredited liberal arts institution. His relationships with the economic power structure of the city played a critical role as the young college struggled financially through the depths of the Great Depression. His belief in Josephus Hopwood's vision of the college never wavered, as reflected in his message to the student body in the late 1930s. Lynchburg College, with continued wise leadership, is just on the threshold of development into an institution which will, in still larger measure, build sound leadership in church and school and state a leadership which will look for its reward in the consciousness of service rendered and a task well done. Upon his death in 1942, the Board of Trustees unanimously adopted a resolution of appreciation which named Mr. Hobbs as, quote, the college's greatest leader, unquote.
biggest thing that I've taken from Westover is probably my interactions with faculty. I started working with Dr. Fryer. He's always available for help and he makes sure that I get to do the experiments and not just be there while he does them. I didn't want to limit myself when I came here to just taking the prereqs for med school. I wanted to get a full, well-rounded education and I definitely found that in the Westover program. It's given me the opportunity to keep playing soccer at a competitive level, um, but also it's given me the ability to be a student and to pursue other activities such as EMS. hundred percent do Westover because it's not something they're going to regret and it's going to be a lot of work, but so is everything else. It's just going to help build their education that they've already had and make them a better person for it. A lot of people go to the universities to find something to be a part of while getting their education. And when you come here, Lynchburg, is that something? It becomes a family. It's what the school's really good at doing. My name is Marlene Castaños. I, was, I graduated in 2009. Um, I was a communication major. I am a digital producer now for the Martin Agency. So we have a broad of amazing clients from Geico to Land Lakes to Oreo. Um, so we get to create amazing content, all those funny Geico commercials that you see. And as a digital producer, I get to create amazing content for digital. I was very highly involved here. Um, I was president of my class while I was here. I was president of the Hispanic Society. I joined um, a sorority when I was here. I had like two jobs. Um, so having a sense of managing my time, um, it kind of pushed me to be better at my job right now. Just knowing that you had someone on your corner was really important and they really took the time to really invest in their students. I felt like I had a, a cheerleading squad behind me at every single point. Um, they were the ones that encouraged me to look for those opportunities to you know, push myself to be better. So it's definitely truly an amazing place. Um, I brag about this place all the time. So if anyone gets lucky enough to be part of this community, I, it's life changing. Everyone has a story, a triumph, a time they fell short, a gift, a light all their own. Every story has a beginning. For us, our stories began long before we got here at the moment we discovered we had something to share with the world. But no matter where we've been, our journeys weave together at the University of Lynchburg. Since 1903, we've grown from a handful of students to a diverse, dynamic community of students, professors, staff, and alumni around the world. In a community that supports who we are and who we want to be, we're on a journey to find where our passions lead so we can lead others to find theirs. Together, we have more experience, we have more knowledge than we do alone. Eventually, our stories will lead us to a path all our own, and we will share our passions with the world. No matter the journey we choose, the University of Lynchburg is, and always will be, our home.
right, halftime here at University of Lynchburg here on Wayne Profit Court. And you're watching ODEC basketball on LHSN, the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. My name's Tim LaDuca and we are witnessing a good one here between the number two Randolph Macon Yellow Jackets and University of Lynchburg Hornets. So yeah, as you see right there, only a three point game. Lynchburg did have a four point lead at one point, had a chance to tie the game up uh, less than a less than 30 seconds in the game. Uh, Miles Taylor missed one of his two free throws. Uh, but we'll see how these two teams have been shaking out so far. And, yep, there's the three point advantage for Randolph Macon. Then the field goal percentage is fairly similar. The difference, and it's something that Dylan Hall, the assistant coach for University of Lynchburg, noted to me prior to today's game, if Lynchburg can outshoot Randolph Macon from the three point line, you're going to have a chance. The only note there is also the turnovers. Can Lynchburg limit their turnovers and maybe cause a couple extra ones from the Yellow Jackets? The nine turnovers for Lynchburg, it's that's not looking good to get up to 20. They had 21 against Guilford on Wednesday in their last loss a couple days ago. But if they can, the thing is, Lynchburg shoots 30% from the three-point line. That's what we expected them to do. So they're not even outperforming from deep, and they're in a three-point game with the defending national champions. Uh, so if Elijah Davis can get hot, he's shooting 49% second in the ODAC. If Jason Easton can make a couple, he's shooting 60% as a freshman. That's phenomenal. If players like that can get hot from downtown, Randolph Macon continues to, you know, do, do what they're doing. I mean, they're not playing poorly by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, the one thing that you could point out there as well, the rebounding, having that total be even is a little bit surprising for me, being that you have Miles Mallory who leads the ODAC in rebounding 9.2 a game. He only has three at the moment. Uh, it also, he averages seven, he averages 15 points a game. He's at seven, so right around the total, but he really hasn't taken over the game yet. Lynchburg's done a good job of limiting him. He hasn't been on the court that much, however, though, too. So look for him to be very fresh after playing a big role against CNU a couple, a couple days ago. Um, so, I mean, it, it's there for the taking for Lynchburg right now. You're down by three. You need to you need to make the right halftime adjustments, and you have to expect that Randolph Make is not going to come out doing the same exact thing that they were doing previously. Uh, we were talking about Miles Mallory's last performance. He had 19 points against the number five Christopher Newport captains, and he also hauled in 11 rebounds, so another double double for him. Okay, well, there's about two minutes until the game resumes. Lynchburg looking to have the upset of the year so far in college basketball uh, as they're taking on the number two Randolph making Yellow Jackets. Who's going to get hot for Lynchburg, especially from deep? Is Miles Mallory going to take over the game? Uh, it's, it's been Josh Talbert who's been the leading scorer so far, who's been, who's been the spark plug for Randolph making so far. Talbert currently has eight to lead the team. Okay. Two minutes until we get back underway for the final 20 here on Wayne Profit Court. I'm excited. You should be too. We're going to go to break here, uh, go to a commercial one more time before things get started back up on Wayne Profit Court here on LHSN. A lot of people go to the universities to find something to be a part of while getting their education. And when you come here, Lynchburg is that something, it becomes a family. It's what the school's really good at doing.
Okay, we're ready to resume things here as Lynchburg trails by three to Randolph Macon. Second half of action underway. Lynchburg starts with the ball. It's Pearson Young, Miles Taylor, Trey Pittman, Landon Sutton, and Elijah Davis. So that's exactly how the team started the game today. Didn't see too much from Elijah Davis, who is shooting 49% from three-point land. Pearson Young misses the first three of the second half. As for Randolph Macon, their starting five for the second half is the same as it was before. Good pass from Talbert. Coble misses the three. So obviously Talbert, Coble, they're out there. Robinson, Bengay, and Miles Mallory. The pass to Taylor. Not stolen, underneath the rim, back to the basket. Flicked up there and missed by Pearson Young. Rebound to Miles Mallory. That's number four for him. Okay, game starting with a good pace here. And there's a foul to slow things down. Let us get our bearings here. Just under a minute into the resumption of play. If you were wondering, my name is Tim LaDuca. I'm the director of digital media here. And I've been having a blast announcing this one so far. It's been a back and forth game. This Talbert can't extend the lead for the moment. Here's his second free throw. He makes it. Talbert, he has had a really good run of games. After he started the season with, a, with 16 points, then he didn't crack five points for the next three games. That includes three points, four point, three points at a loss at Mary Washington. So since scoring four against Hampton Sydney, which was a narrow two point victory for them as Landon Sutton fires a three off the target. been every single game the rest of the way for Josh Talbert since that four poor performance against Hampton Sydney has been in double figures. So he's really figured things out. Things have started clicking. He surpassed a thousand points in his career. He's not going with the headband today. Last time I saw him uh, play in person, which was last year in Ashland, uh, Lynchburg versus the, the Yellow Jackets. He was wearing the headband. I missed it, I think it's a good look for him. But he has been a huge part as he's figured out his role here as a starter for Randolph Macon. Uh, he's just really coming into, into his own. He's leading the team right now with, with the nine points. So we have a traveling violation here and the turnover. It's both teams trying to get their bearings straight. Something to keep an eye on here. Two stats that we're gonna watch for for Lynchburg to see if they can pull this upset off. Maybe three as <laughs> Miles Mallory shrugs that one off as it gets a friendly bounce off the rim. Oh, the inbound pass turned over by Robinson. Robinson calling for it. Mallory. Is this the moment where the senior really starts getting going? Maybe so as he gets the left-handed layup to fall. But if we're gonna look at three numbers for Lynchburg, it's gonna be the three-point shooting percentage. They're shooting 25% right now. They've missed two uh, so far here in the second half. The turnovers, they're at 11. There's also been two turnovers so far for Lynchburg. And then Miles Mallory's point total also is gonna be a big factor. He's got 11. So he's made two baskets so far. Uh, here in the second half. So two, two turnovers, two missed three-pointers, and two buckets for Miles Mallory as things um, are starting to go Randolph Macon's way here three minutes into the play. Miles Taylor at the line for one. He converts, so there's the and one for him. He gets up to nine points, looking to be the first Hornet in double figures. Coble for three. It's off the mark. Offensive rebound, though, however, by Bengay. Oh, good awareness there on the backside. Help defense from 
Taylor. Bengay got the offensive rebound and Mallory was wide open on the other side of the rim, but just jumping into that passing lane was Miles Taylor to stop Mallory from getting the easy two. Pulley Jr. doesn't take the three. Down low, Bengay defended by Pittman. Pittman's gotta get his arms straight up. He had them wrapped around. Bengay is gonna get called if Bengay tried to go up for the shot. And just before the shot clock goes off, Talbert shoots an air ball and then fouled again is Taylor. He's gonna go to the line for two free throws. Fouls on Miles Mallory, that's gonna be his third. So that will raise an eyebrow from everybody here in Turner Gymnasium. Does Coach Merkel pull his star player off the court? I mean, you gotta, you gotta think so. Lynchburg's only down by five, and Mallory's got three fouls. Taylor can't convert the first. We'll check the official stats. Yeah, Miles Mallory has three fouls, so you're, you're gonna bring Lance Johnson in to, to get him out of there as Taylor makes the second half of the, of the free throws. Four point lead for Lynchburg. If I'm gonna put my coaching hat on, I currently got my uh, announcer hat on, it's a little different. But if I got my coaching hat on, I don't know how much time you give Miles Mallory because you can't just let Lynchburg come back into the game. That's gonna be big for Randolph Macon as Talbert gets the and one. A lot of fouls, but a lot of makes too on those fouls. Teams are playing through the contact nicely here. Uh, but Talbert's gonna need to step up in Mallory's absence to try to push this lead out and give Yellow the Yellow Jackets a cushion. But I, I, I guess you give, them, you give them four minutes, you wait to the media timeout to bring Mallory back in. And then if he gets his fourth quickly, I mean, you take him out until, until things get desperate, I guess? See, <laughs> see, you can hear the indecision in my voice. That's why I'm not a uh, national champion head coach in my eighth season for Randolph Macon, like Josh Merkel is. Uh, we're gonna have a timeout here on the court. And it's gonna be a full timeout, which means we will go to break. We'll be right back here on LHSN. We return here with just over 60 minutes to play and a seven point lead for Randolph Macon. It's gonna be Lynchburg's ball underneath their own basket. Or nope, that was in the first half. Lynchburg's gonna face the full court pressure here now in the second half, pretty much for the first time all day. Let's see what the press break is for Lynchburg. Parham catches it deep. And he's gonna just have to dribble a little carefully up with Keyshawn Pulley, but no harm, no foul there. We'll see how that full court press plays out. Taylor, he's putting the ball on the ground. Double team comes, allows for the switch. And they change the sides of the court and Jordan Parham hits a big three. His first three pointer of the afternoon. So Miles Taylor pulled the double team, kicked it out to Davis and Elijah Davis found a wide open Jordan Parham 
for three. There's Talbert though, coming right back and answering. Seems like every time Lynchburg hits a big three, Talbert is on the other end with an easy two. So here's Taylor again. Taylor doing some ball handling duties as the biggest man out on the court for Lynchburg. Parham, try it again. Yes, sir, back-to-back -back three pointers for Jordan Parham. Big three for number one, Jordan P. Give some energy to this Turner Gymnasium crowd. This foul is called on the ground, and it's an offensive foul. Was it on Talbert, it was on number 22. Oh, I'm sorry, it was on number 20, it was Lance Johnson. It was on Lance Johnson. Is Talbert's gonna come out now? Still no Miles Mallory, it's only been about a minute since he got his third foul. Taylor kicked out to Makovic in the corner. Lynchburg can't hit their third straight three-pointer. But they've made two so far, both of them coming off the hand of Jordan Parham. Koble, he goes up and he's blocked by Makovic, but also whistle on the body. So Makovic gets a, uh, it's a foul called on him and it'll, it'll send Will Koble to the line for two. Cole Murphy checks back in. The sophomore point guard got some minutes in the first half, knocked down a three-pointer and he's back out. Alex Fitch, Alex Fitch checks in for Elijah Davis here. And Koble subs out, Bengay comes in. Murphy thought about the three. He'll try a long two instead. That one's just a little short. Scott pulls in the rebound. Scott dribbling on the left side. Swung around the perimeter. Lance Johnson, he's subbed in for Mallory. He'll try a three, too strong. Fouls on the ground on Johnson. Give him his third foul. So the substitution for Mallory now in foul trouble as well. They'll go to Noah Lindsay now. Murphy to inbound. Taylor surveys, hasn't used his dribble yet. Parham called for the offensive foul. So, Noah Lindsay who comes in for Johnson who is in foul trouble right there, comes up big defensively, doesn't get called for the foul, instead forces a turnover, drawing the charge. Pulley. Goes up, blocked by Taylor. Rebound, Parham. Fast pace, Fitch. Thought he was fouled from the corner on the three-pointer. He misses everything. Scott the other way in transition, moving quickly as Randolph Macon. They're pushing the lead. Lynchburg's trying to answer right back with more fast break of their own. Foul is gonna be called on the ground, on the floor.
Murphy's got it. Halfway through the shot clock. Now 10 seconds to go. Taylor tries to pull up, swish, he cashed it. That's a big man shot from Miles Taylor, sticks the tongue out, Hornets are down by four. Wow, what a shot from Taylor. Lynchburg not really running with a center position, but the tallest player on the court right now for Lynchburg is Taylor. Counted and one. But Taylor's kind of been orchestrating the offense from the top of the key. He's able to put the ball on the ground and gets, get into the lane. He's able to, you know, cross up a defender, get some space, and knock down a fadeaway three-pointer. Not quite what you expected from the six-foot-five junior. And I can say that because I've watched almost every single game that Miles Taylor's played over the last two seasons. It's not something you see. Not, I didn't know that was. I didn't know that was in his bag. I'll be honest. But it's uh, it's nice to see. All right, so we're going to see Miles Mallory check back in now. I was wrong. I thought that we would see him at the 10-minute mark, but comes in with 12 minutes to go. A four-minute break for one of the best players in the country. Still facing full court pressure. It's a zone pressure that time. And Randolph Macon falls into the zone. See if Lynchburg can earn a three pointer from the zone. And there'll be 14 seconds on the shot clock. It went out of bounds to stop the possession, but it almost was a turnover there. Lynchburg now going to be facing the man to man. So Randolph Macon, after the stoppage, switches to man coverage. Taylor, step back off one foot, cashed it again. Oh, Miles Taylor's in his bag right now. Whoa. <laughs> wow, we're seeing some stuff right now from Miles Taylor. He's putting the team on his back. He's got 15. Talbert. And he lost the ball, but they're gonna call a foul. Gets a reaction out of Lynchburg's bench. And this game is going to slow, the pace is going to slow down soon, I would expect, as that's the sixth team foul on the Hornets. So the next foul, we're going to be shooting free throws for Randolph Macon. And Randolph Macon, they have five fouls, so uh, two more fouls, and Lynchburg will be in the one and one, and we're not even halfway through the second half. Off the inbound, Robinson knocks down the three. 50 points now for Randolph Macon. Anytime you can talk about 50 points in basketball here in Wayne Profit Court, mine instantly goes to Theron Suggs, who in his first game ever uh, on Wayne Profit Court for Lynchburg, he scored 50 points, and Miles Taylor's going nuclear right now. <laughs> the bucket and the foul, chance to go to the line for one extra. That's the sixth foul on Randolph Macon. So. We're, we're shooting free throws the rest of the way here, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see how that changes the, changes, changes the game here as, as, as a f game that's gotten pretty physical as of late. Now those fouls will turn into scoring opportunities. Taylor for the end one, too strong. It's gonna be a lane violation. And he misses it after the after the free lane violation, so no pro, no harm, no foul there for Randolph Macon. Six point game. Robinson on the floor at the rim. Another foul is called. Two shots. Robinson just snapped a five game scoring streak where he reached double figures. He's only scored six points against Christopher Newport despite playing 33 minutes. 
Uh, two for 10 from the floor. It's two for two from the free throw line, however, as he makes that first one. He's got four points now. He pulled in three rebounds and had one assist and one steal in the big win against the captains. And what many can assume to be maybe a preview of an NCAA tournament game coming up later if uh, we're privileged enough to see Randolph make a square off with CNU again. It was a low scoring game, however, as we're seeing right now between these two teams. Randolph Macon's been playing a lot of low scoring games as offensive fouls called on Cole Murphy. But uh, Randolph Macon, that's, that's three straight games now being held under 70 points. However, I say that with a major asterisk. I don't even know how much it even matters as uh, they're, they, they've won all three of those games. Scored 69 against Hampton Sydney, which is a very good basketball team, a team that gave Randolph Macon trouble earlier in the year when uh, Randolph Macon only won by two. It was a non-conference game, however. Then Randolph Macon beat Guilford, the number 24 team in the country, a team that just beat Lynchburg by double digits. Uh, but Randolph Macon beat Guilford by three points and then beat CNU by five. So three really close games for Randolph Macon as of late. And that trend seems to be continuing here as Bangay hits the first free throw. He's got six points now. Chance to extend the lead to 10. Yes, indeed. This is the biggest lead now we've seen for Randolph Megan. Their biggest lead earlier was with five minutes to go in the first half, they led by eight. That was part of a 12 point scoring run for Randolph Megan at the time. Outlet pass from Coble up to Bongay. Fouled by Fitch. Bongay's down on the court. Looks like he's in some pain. Foul's going to be called on Fitch. Athletic trainer's out on the court to help Bongay as he was fouled. He's going to have to go to the line here for two shots if he can hopefully get up. Hopeful for him here. He's moving around though, so. And he's sitting up. That's a good sign as the gym's gone quiet. Coach Merkel helps him up and it looks like Bongay's going to be able to take his... No, if it's not, he's going to come off the court. And they're going to bring Keyshawn Pulley Jr. into the game for him. If I'm correct, Hillary Scott's going to have to pick someone to shoot free throws here off of the Randolph Macon bench, or they're going to say the foul was on the floor. No? Miles Mallory's going to take the free throws here. For Randolph Macon. Not the best free throw shooter on the team for the Yellow Jackets, but he makes the first. He's made all four of his free throws so far, and he's made all five. As he's now up to 13 points, one behind uh, uh, the team leader, Josh Talbert. Miles Mallory, who is in foul trouble. He's got three fouls, uh, but no one has as many points as Lynchburg's number 13, Miles Taylor. He leads the way in this game with 17 points. Full timeout on the court. We'll take a quick break and we'll be back as we are halfway through the second half here on LHSN.
back on Wayne Profit Court. And Lynchburg trails Randolph Macon by 12. Take this pause in the action to uh, just give a quick little shout out to my grandpa. Hey, Gramps, thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying this game here on LHSN between the number two ranked Randolph Macon Yellow Jackets and University of Lynchburg, the Hornets here of, in Lynchburg, Virginia. 12 point game now. Randolph Macon still displaying the full court pressure. Landon Sutton has the ball. Backdoor cut to Pearson Young was going to be really good, except Pearson Young's tripped up, which means he's going to get to go to the free throw line now for the one and one. Something to note as well, Randolph Macon now will be shooting the double bonus the rest of the way for the next 10 minutes as Lynchburg has reached the 10 point, 10 uh, foul threshold. Pearson Young sinks the first. He'll get a chance at the second. Now with seven points. Pearson Young third on the team right now in scoring. Make that tied for second with Jordan Parham. They both have eight. They've done it a little differently, however. Jordan Parham, two for three from the three-point line. No free throws and also a uh, runner in the lane. Pearson Young, on the other hand, no three-pointers. One for five from the floor, but he's made six of seven from the free throw line, which has been really good. His one field goal was the N1. He uh, converted the unconventional three-point play. And Pulley Jr. can't make that three-pointer. As we have a 10-point game here on Wayne Profit Court. Full court pressure still there. Landon Sutton catches the ball uncontested. Talbert's going to meet him at the timeline. Sutton turns it over. Bange. And one. Big finish at the rim in transition. Fast break layups good by Bange. He's fouled by Taylor. He's going to go to the line for the end one. The free throw numbers have skyrocketed here in the second half. This is the 13th and 14th free throw of the second half for Randolph Macon, who is shooting 81.8% .8 from the line. So they've really been able to take advantage of their uh, cheese and lettuce at the line. Only missing four, now missing five, but nevertheless, uh, 18 points from the charity stripe is going to be really beneficial, especially in a game that was closely contested until a couple minutes ago when Randolph Macon burst out to their largest lead. Now they lead by 12. Another foul on the other end. So really, we're just going back and forth here with fouls. And Landon Sutton will get a chance at the one and one. Sutton is a 76% free throw shooter, makes about two free throws a game. And he makes that one. Back to a 10 point game. So maybe we'll see a free throw shooting competition here in the last nine minutes of the game. I was talking about the turnovers and the three pointers for Lynchburg to get them back in the game. If they can limit their fouls, which they go to the zone here, which may help in that in that regard. And if they can make their free throws on the other end and get some nice fast break layups, they'll have a chance to crawl back into this game. Jordan Parham has been fouled. He's gonna go to the line. Both teams shot 10 free throws in the first half. There have been 13 for Randolph Macon here in the second, and this will be the 19th and 20th for Lynchburg. So the difference in this game, I guess you could say at this point has been Lynchburg's only shooting 66%, making 13 of 19, so now a little bit higher than that. 13 of 19 from the free throw line compared to 18 of 23 for Randolph Macon. Jordan Parham makes both. That jumps the free throw percentage for the team up to 70%, so things get a little better 
in that department for Lynchburg after Parham's performance at the line. Still showing zone. Good active hands there from Parham. As the play collapsed, they found Bongay underneath. He's followed by Taylor again. Oh, they're gonna call that on Pittman. That's his fifth. So Trey Pittman has fouled out. He's the first player to foul out. Check in on Mallory, who had three fouls and was in foul trouble at the 16 minute mark. He hasn't fouled since. Daniel Bange makes his first free throw. He missed the one and one a couple of possessions earlier. And he misses the second. Rebound to Pearson Young. Let's check in on Lynchburg's leading rebounder. Pearson Young now has five boards. That's his season average right now as a freshman. Into the lane, defers to Makovic. Easy baseline, J, no good. Rebound, Pulley. Got to give myself credit. Haven't made any uh, puns so far with Keyshawn Pulley Jr.'s name. You could say he pulls up from three. He pulls down the rebound. I haven't said any of that so far. As Robinson knocks down the two. Randolph making, e making some easy buckets so far. As Pearson Young. He can't come down with his own miss, but he gets fouled in the process, so he is going to go to the line to shoot two. Both teams in the double bonus now with the rest of the way. There's a lot of time left for both teams to have 10 fouls. And I mean, there's been more than that. Will Coble checks back in. He comes in for Jabril Robinson, who just made a jumper. Young makes both. So the energy kind of is deflated out of this Lynchburg off Lynchburg team, but I, it really shouldn't have. Is they're only down by nine. Maybe a little discouraged by the run that Randolph Macon's gone on as Coble misses the three pointer. And Pearson Young comes down with the rebound. That's six for him. Uh, Lynchburg's zone has kind of flustered Randolph Macon, has made the Randolph offense kind of go stagnant. They've really had to grind for their points and doing so mostly in transition and from the free throw line. Bongay, he blocks Pearson Young's shot. Pulley Jr. His pass intended for Mallory, broken up and stolen by Pearson Young. And in transition, it's gonna be a foul. And even though the outlet pass was intended for Joran Parham, who is gonna make the easy two, it's gonna be two free throws here instead. So not too much of a difference there for Lynchburg's offense. Jabil Robinson had just subbed out. He's instantly coming back in. He's gonna have to wait till uh, the second free throw here from Young. Young sinks another one. Young eight for nine now from the free throw line. Make that nine of 10. And nine of 11, so really good performance from the free throw line for the freshman. Bengay into the corner, Koble pulls up from three, cashes it, that's a big three pointer there from Randolph Macon as Lynchburg was inching back with the free throws. Pearson Young's nine free throws are a career high for him here in his early season. He made six of seven previously uh, was his season high. And Parham, big three-pointer from him. To answer back on Koble's three. Ooh, Coach Josh Merkel way out, cross half court to talk to Koble on that three-pointer, after that three-pointer from Parham. 
We're going to take a quick break here on LHSN as Lynchburg trails by eight. Six minutes to play here in the second half here on Wayne Profit Court in Turner Gymnasium on the campus of the University of Lynchburg in Lynchburg, Virginia. And Lynchburg trails by eight. Pearson Young's been fantastic from the free throw line. He's made nine of 11, and Jordan Parham just sank his third three of the game as Lynchburg holds on here trying to keep things close against the number two team in all the land. There's another turnover created by the zone, and the other way, Landon Sutton with the left hand makes the, makes the easy bunny layup. See if this zone continues to fluster Randolph Macon. He's really just slowed Randolph Macon down has been one of the bigger things, and the ball just stays along the perimeter. Koble did cash a three from the corner, other than that, Lynchburg's had a lot of success here. There's cutting Talbert. Wow, Talbert does an amazing job there, getting to the rim, finishing through the contact, and drawing the foul. That's a big two-pointer and trip to the line for the senior. So as I was saying, you know, Randolph making a little more stagnant in that offense there. Talbert makes me eat my words instantly by catching that ball from the elbow on the cut, going into the teeth of the defense, three defenders around him, doesn't even need to put the ball on the ground before going up uh, and finishing at the rim. Really good job there from Talbert. He's got 17 now to match the game high that's set by Miles Taylor. So Taylor and Talbert battling it out here on Wayne Profit Court for these two teams. Pearson Young, one-handed pass. Taylor against Bongay. Another cross-court pass. Pearson Young had to let that one fly at the end of the shot clock, no good. Racing down the court to beat the zone, and Talbert finds Mallory for an easy two in transition. Mallory's up to 15, he's one point away from his season average. Scored 19 in his last outing against CNU. He's got 15 here. Landon Sutton is fouled and heads to the line for two. Mallory's season high came against Maryville on December 30th before the calendar flipped to 2023. He scored 29 points. That's the third time he was surpassing 20 points this season. Sutton, a little short on the first. Bryce Scott comes in for Bongay. Sutton can't redeem himself there. And the over the back call a charge to Mason Makovic. So that 
loose ball foul, different than an offensive foul. It will result in two free throws here in the double bonus. Scott, he's got seven. So Elijah Davis checks back in along with Alex Fitch. Those are two hot hands from the three-point line. However, Elijah Davis hasn't connected from deep yet. 0 for 1 on the day. It's the only field goal he's taken after getting the start. Scott makes both. And it's Miles Taylor carrying the ball up the court. Interesting to see the six foot five guard forward doing the ball handling duty, but he's really impressed with his skills in that department so far. Kick out to Fitch. Now Taylor, Taylor catches it in the corner. He's not happy about it. Poked away by Talbert. It seemed like that possession was doomed once Taylor caught it in the corner. He really didn't want to be there with, with the ball there. And Talbert takes advantage. Miles Mallory turns and fires. Gets the easy two. 17 points now for him. Check in on the double-double watch. Only five rebounds, however. Turnover here. So this is not going to snap any crazy double-double streak if Miles Mallory can't haul in five more rebounds. Only at four points against Guilford around January 7th. And he only had six rebounds as well. Robinson, his three. Too strong, and they're gonna call Alex Fitch for the foul as Brace Scott goes down hard. Fitch is gonna now get a technical foul as well. Alex Fitch, he gets called for the for the foul on the floor, loose ball foul. He took the bottom out from Bryce Scott, and then it's a technical foul on top of that. Talbert will get to shoot for the technical, but it's gonna be Bryce Scott shooting the two fouls, foul shots afterward for the uh, loose ball foul. Talbert makes the first, he's gonna get another shot. Then it's going to be Bryce Scott for two, and then I believe Randolph Macon will get the ball. So Bryce Scott's going on a little bit of a scoring run here. So he's made a couple from the free throw line as of late. He'll shoot two, both teams in the double bonus. So Lynchburg trailed by three at halftime. Now they're on the precipice of going down by 20 points here with three minutes to play. All right, I was wrong. They're not going to get the ball in the technical, just the two shots. Either way, Lynchburg trails by 19. Elijah Davis drives in on Mallory. Nice cut from Kavon James. He's fouled. Kavon James is real slippery there on the backside of the defense as he's made a lot of nice cuts so far in this game. Gives himself a couple good opportunities. I like his speed, I like his ability to change direction really quick and uh, deceive the defense. Uh, and, and his ability to move without the ball has really been a big factor for him here. He misses the first, that was his first attempt of the day from the free throw line or the floor. Lynchburg will now full court press. Yeah. 
Pulley Jr. drives on Young. He's fouled on the ground. This will be the 23rd and 24th free throw of the second half for Randolph Macon. And both teams taking a ton of shots from the free throw line. However, Lynchburg has really fallen off, only shooting 18 of 28. They've missed 10 free throws here. In this one, they're shooting 64%. It's the 27th make for Randolph Macon. Pulley Jr. Misses that one. It's back to 19. Kavon James, Taylor, all five Hornets around the three-point line until D Taylor drives in and draws the foul. Two minutes to go here, but the game really crawling along as the fouls have really gone sky high. And both teams have been in the double bonus since about halfway through the second half. But not complaining, because that means we get to spend more time together here on LHSN. Checking out the number two team in the country. And the Lynchburg Hornets. Fun group Lynchburg is, despite you know some struggles this year, only four wins. It's been a lot of fun to watch. Obviously, it's a lot of fun when you can see a team shoot so well from the three-point line. As a team, only shooting 30%. As Miles Taylor gets the turnover, Jordan Parham looking for his fourth three of the day. No good. Offensive rebound. Kavon James this time. He fires. And Mallory comes down with the rebound. That's the sixth rebound for Mallory. But, you know, you got two premier shooters who are leading the ODAC and Jason Easton, who came up big with 14 points in the last game for Lynchburg. Elijah Davis, he's the son of UNC's head coach, uh, Hubert Davis. So there's some fun there, and you spent some time with Elijah a couple weeks ago in the Hornet Skills Challenge. It's Miles Mallory gets it in the bucket. You can check out the uh, video we filmed with Elijah Davis on our Instagram. There's the handle there at the bottom. It's part of the Hornet Skills Challenge. Elijah Davis squared off in a game of pig with women's basketball's Olivia Harris. That was a lot of fun. You can also see that on our YouTube page. I'm guessing you know how to find the YouTube page as uh, you're watching here on LHSN, streamed on YouTube. There's 20 points for Miles Mallory. That's the fourth time he's been into the 20 point environment. Reached the 20 point plateau for the fourth time this season. I ever want to say it. And it also makes the 20 point lead for Randolph Macon as Lynchburg turns it over. In transition, Talbert. Give him 21. So Talbert takes over the leading scorer privileges for Randolph Macon, the second. Miles Mallory comes off the court. Miles Mallory shaking his head over on the bench, like, okay, Talbert, go get yours. Not going to be mad about that. <laughs> Elijah Davis, turn around, a little too strong. Rebound to Liam Joyce. Less than a minute to play here, and even though Talbert and Randolph Macon push the pace on the fast break, last possession, looks like they're gonna slow it down a little bit here. Lynchburg still showing that zone. Lynchburg's zone was very effective for the moment uh, later on here in the second half. Pulley Jr. tries one off the mark. Rebound goes to Taylor. Taylor with his third rebound, so he's gonna lose out on the Rebounding lead for Lynchburg as Pearson Young has seven right now. Elijah Davis gets his first field goal of the afternoon. And there's 15 seconds, so that's going to do it here on LHSN. Your final score is the Yellow Jackets 83, Hornets 63. It's a 20-point win for Randolph Macon. Randolph-Macon hasn't lost since November 16th. It's their 16th win of the year, and they're on a really hot streak right now as they have taken down CNU, 
Guilford in the past couple days. Those are two ranked opponents. Uh, and taking down Lynchburg now. Lynchburg falls to four and 12 on the year. Randolph making up to 15 and 11. Go through some of the leaders tonight. Miles Taylor, he dropped 19. He was one of three Hornets in double figures. Jordan Parham, he nets 13, and Pearson Young finishes with 11. Those are your top three scorers. Pearson Young also had seven rebounds. Josh Talbert led the way. He had a late fast break bucket to take over the team lead in scoring and the game high lead in scoring. He's got 21 to end the day. He finished with two assists, two rebounds. Does it without shooting any three, without making any three pointers. Miles Mallory, he impressed with 20 points, but comes up short of the double double with six boards. He was a perfect six for six from the free throw line. We'll get to that in a second. Then Daniel Bongay had 10, and Bryce Scott also had 10. Some good minutes from Bryce Scott coming off the bench as the sixth man from Charlotte, North Carolina. Free throws were a big factor in this one. Randolph Macon made 28 of 35, 28 points from the free throw line. Uh, shooting 80%, Lynchburg shot 20 of 30. So a lot of points also from Lynchburg from the free throw line, but were not as advantageous of the opportunities from the charity stripe. Okay, well, it was a privilege. The two teams are circling up at midcourt. They're going to break the huddle. We'll break the huddle here on LHSN. One final time, I want to give my main man, Gabe Garcia, a big shout out coming out on his Saturday. He's the GA assistant coach for the baseball team here at Lynchburg. Really talented group of guys excited to broadcast their games here on LHSN. They're ranked in the top 25 after a really impressive season last year. Avery Neves, might have heard of him. He's a first team preseason All-American for Lynchburg. Can't wait to see him uh, punish some baseballs at Fox Field later on. To get all you need, you can follow us on Twitter at LYN Hornets. You can also check us out on Instagram at Lynchburg Sports. We have a lot of fun there. Swimming was in action today against Roanoke and Milligan. Make sure you check out those results before we leave. If anyone wants to stick around to hear about women's basketball, I can give you an update on that. The women were out in Virginia Beach this afternoon and they pummel the Marlins 74 40 leading scorer there Olivia Harris 18 who got a little shout out for the Hornet skills challenge okay it's time to go watch some football uh, NFL playoffs start today one of my favorite parts of the year uh, thanks for thanks for spending some time with me here on LHSN <laughs>